everyone, happy Sunday. Welcome to my first, well not really, but a baking video. I know I left on my community tab last week um, a request for video ideas and I was discussing, do you want me to go to Target, do you want me to cook? And a lot of you wanted to see me cook. Well, I know with Easter coming up, um, some people like to bake and bring desserts to different gatherings and brunches and stuff. So I thought I'd make a carrot cake today. Why I picked this, I have no idea. I've never made it before, but what the heck? Let's have some fun in my kitchen. So here we are today. And let me just tell you, the worst part of making this cake is the main character, the co the, not the coconut, what are you? Carrot. I had to shred this carrot and my hands were hurting me. And then I'm like, oh my God, I don't have enough. It's, it calls for two cups. Well. I got carried away. I have a whole nother ball. Anyone have any ideas for leftover shredded carrots? <laughs> All right, let's get started. So this is gonna be new to me as far as filming. So bear with me here. I might be moving you guys around here and there. By the way, both my daughters are downstairs and I'm threatening my teenager that I'm gonna turn this camera around on her because she's trying to make me laugh right now. It's gonna come back to haunt her. All right, so in this bowl, I've got two cups of flour, a teaspoon of cinnamon, a teaspoon of baking soda, and a teaspoon and a half of baking powder. Now, you don't have to memorize this stuff. You know I will link this recipe. It is not my recipe. It is one I got off of the internet, of course. Where else did we get of it? What did we do before Google? Seriously. Oh, we had cookbooks, that's right. Speaking of, my mom gave me way back 20 years ago, the book called The Joy of Cooking, and I still have it. It's like got water damage on it, and it's been used and abused, but hey, it got me through. All right, I feel like my head's cut off. All right, there. So these are my dry ingredients. As I mentioned, they're all mixed through, and the way they do this, she, she does this recipe, is uh, she does a one, two, three grouping of the ingredients. So one is your, uh, two cups of sugar, this is gonna be nice and sweet. I already doled out the two cups of sugar. Then it's gonna be three eggs at room temperature. So here are my th three eggs. I'm gonna to toss those in there. Now, if you've never gotten eggs to room temperature quickly, I can give you a hint. <sighs> Long time ago, I was on the Whole30 diet. I don't know if you've ever heard that, but everything's whole ingredients and you avoid certain things, etc. And I learned how to make my own mayonnaise. But the nice thing about doing that was I learned how to get eggs at room temperature quickly. So what you do is you take your tap water on the hottest setting, fill up a small bowl, like I think I had, I had this bowl filled up with that water at that temperature, and then put your eggs in there. And in like, honestly, like five minutes, you can feel them, they'll be at room temperature. So there's a little tip from me. And next in this bowl goes one and a quarter cups of unsweetened applesauce, which I have right here. Um, you could also use, if you want, if you don't want to do the applesauce, you can do, uh, what did she say? Uh, one and a quarter cups of oil. I'm gonna mix this up with my whisk. It says just to mix this up. I don't even think I'm gonna get my um, electric beaters out. I actually have a really nice KitchenAid from, from my bridal shower, but it's so heavy and cumbersome. Sometimes I don't get it out, isn't that bad? I definitely make sure I use it at least once a year though. Like I said, I'm not a huge, huge baker, so. All right, so I mixed up the applesauce, the sugar, and the eggs, and then number two, you dump in all of the, well, gradually, I'm not gonna just plow it in there, the flour mixture. So I'm gonna put that in, and you guys can't even see what I'm doing. Hold on, there you go, you don't need to see me. I have, yes, one of my Walmart graphic tees on right now. I really do wear the stuff that you see me haul or try on in my purchases. So I'm just incorporating the flour mixture with the applesauce, eggs, and all that luscious two cups of white sugar. I shouldn't say luscious because aren't we supposed to avoid sugar for inflammation and stuff? I mean, this is an over 40 channel. I'm kidding. We got to treat ourselves, especially on the holidays. All right, time to put some more flour in. Oh, by the way, in this um, flour mixture, there is a teaspoon of cinnamon as well. 
So, and then this recipe calls for nuts. And whoops, I'm gonna have to skip that part. My computer just got a major dusting of flour. Let me get that off. Um, I'm gonna have to skip that part. We do have nut allergies in the home, both of my girls. So that's okay. It's an optional ingredient anyway. Another optional ingredient in something I could have bought, I, in fact, I intended to buy and then forgot when I was at the store is golden raisins. So if you don't wanna use nuts, you can use golden raisins for the cake. And if you're like me today, skip both of those add-ons. Add but don't worry because there's something cool in this recipe that um, I think is gonna make it tasty and I don't think I'm gonna miss the nuts or the raisins. So, and that's coming up in the next grouping. All right, so we combine the wet and the dry and now here are the items that make this a carrot cake. So we need one teaspoon of vanilla That's a given, we know that was coming. But the next ingredient that comes in this stage is one cup of shredded sweetened coconut. And I think that this is the ingredient that's gonna give me some texture to the, um, the whole batter and the whole cake and probably make it feel, you know, like there is a raisin or nuts in there. It's gonna give me some texture and It'll bake up really nicely. And I feel like I've had coconut and carrot cake before. Let me know in the comments down below if you like carrot cake and have you ever had carrot cake with coconut in it? You know, we may have and not even have known. And that was, by the way, the sweetened coconut. So we are getting layers of flavor and sweetness in here. So the last, well not last, secondly, you know the last ingredient is gonna be the star of the show. Next ingredient, which I also think is unique, is this crushed pineapple. So one cup of crushed pineapple in juice. Don't buy the heavy syrup pineapple. And I thought it was funny that her recipe actually called for Dole, but who knows, she might be sponsored by Dole. But I bought it, I used the Dole. And buy the one, like I said, that's in juice and don't drain it. We all wanna instantly drain that stuff, but not in this recipe. All right, and here comes the celebrity, the carrots. So I thought this would be a cute cake for Easter, cause you know, bunnies, carrots, why not, right? And it's gonna be a pretty um, cream cheese frosting on top with some coconut flakes. And I think that would be, make a really good presentation to bring to someone's house or set out after brunch something light, something springy. If you have a really cute um, cake stand or something, you can put it in there. Now this cake can be put in, you're gonna preheat your oven to 350 first. It can be put in the small round cake pans, which I have. However, I only have two and her recipe called for three. So I'm probably gonna edit this, turn off the camera and see if there's a way I can get away with doing it in two, but this looks like an awful lot of batter. So then the other option was a nine by 13 pan. So I'm on the fence with that because I have, I have a really cute cake stand. You know me, everything has to be cute. And I want, I wanted to make the two layer cake or three layer cake and put it on the cake stand, but I only have two cake pans. All right, so everything is combined. That is it. I am going to decide on my pans, get them in the oven, have them cool off. For me, it's gonna take a minute, but for you guys, there I am. For me, it's gonna take, a, you know, however, let's see, how long is it gonna be in the oven? It's gonna be in the oven for, whoa, 40, 35 to 40 minutes. So I'm gonna get this in the oven. For you, it's gonna be instantaneous. I'm gonna come back, we're gonna make the frosting, frost the cake, and do all the fun stuff. And taste it, duh. All right, I'll be right back. You guys, I did not bake the cake yet, but I'm back because I'm so excited I came up with an idea. So, I have two eight inch cake pans so I can still make my layer cake. However, because I have so much batter, it's gonna be too much just for to pour it into both of those. So I found my cupcake pan, one of them, and I am going to make cupcakes with the extra, which is even cuter. So if you're going, I cut my finger, my thumb, in the meantime, while we were gone, I had about two minutes and I managed to cut my thumb, but I'm fine, I'm fine. 
Um, so I'm gonna make cupcakes and a layer cake and I'm super excited. So, oh, by the way, here's a tip. She said to use baking spray that has a little flour in it. This is from Aldi, you can get this at any store. Pam also makes one. Or she did say that you can use um, parchment paper, lightly grease and use parchment paper. So I think because, which is cool, it's so moist, it might be a little sticky. So I'm gonna use this. She said she's had good luck with it. I'm gonna get this all in the oven and it's not even gonna be 40 minutes now that I'm doing this. Um, doing it this way, these cook up a little quicker. So only 25 minutes, but for you, once again, instantaneous, I'll be back. All right, you guys, I'm back. I forgot that we have to make the frosting together. So frosting is fairly easy. As you know, um, carrot cake is always paired with a cream cheese frosting and no complaints here. Granted, I try to avoid dairy. Um, I really, you know, my stomach doesn't do too well with dairy, but I can make exceptions for everything. I normally don't eat animal products at all, but my famous tagline is except in cake, because you know, there's eggs in cake and that's fine. So in butter, duh. So this uh, cream cheese frosting calls for one eight ounce package of cream cheese frosted and one half cup frosted, defrosted, nope, softened, there it is one eight ounce package of cream cheese softened and one stick of softened butter. So in my bowl it goes, I'm gonna show you the bowl. It's got a little dusting of powdered sugar in here because I realized I needed to put that in a separate bowl and then add it to this. So first I'm gonna beat this until it's well mixed. And then from here, that's nice and softened. I actually cheated on this as well. I did not have it sitting out on my counter for hours. I'm fortunate enough that my microwave actually has a button called soften. So that's what I used until it was absolutely perfect just like that. So now you add another teaspoon of vanilla. In that goes. I'm gonna mix that up. And now I'm going to gradually add in some of the powdered sugar. And I have a little visitor. Hi, Tyler. Want to say hi again? Hi. <laughs> I just started laughing and I inhaled some of the powdered sugar. It was a pretty sweet taste. Excellent. Who does not love cream cheese frosting? I mean, really. We might, you know, have a little bit of a stomach ache, some of us, but... I don't know, I'll still eat it. Certainly don't eat this on a regular basis. All right, I'm gonna finish mixing this up and I'm gonna check on my cupcakes and cakes because I can smell them and I wanna make sure they're not burning and they're cooked perfectly and I will be right back. Okay, you guys, I'm back with my helper, my angel, my baby girl, Tali. By the way, I don't know if I ever told you, but Tali, your name is short for, what's your full name? Natalia. Natalia. So we've got her apron nice and high. <laughs> we are covered, because this is not a nice and neat task. Come on here. So what we have left to do now is frost the two cakes. Make sure you got a good view. We're gonna frost the two layers of the cakes here. now. I can tell you that they're extremely moist. I was like stunned at how moist this cake is gonna be. So for that reason, you can tell that it's not really a perfect flat surface. All that yummy pineapple, carrots, and applesauce really make this a heavy, dense cake as opposed to a moist cake, right, Tali? I need to find a better angle. But we're gonna work with it and we are gonna frost these layers. So we're gonna frost the first one, right, Tali? Put a yes. big dollop in the middle. This is gonna be our cream cheese filling. Now we do have some cupcakes. We managed to get six cupcakes um, and there's only five right now. I'm just saying I have to test my own work. It's delicious. So I have one of these. I think it's called an inverted spatula. Can you tell I am not? Tell you, am I a baker? Do I bake a lot? What do I bake? Come over here so they can see you. What do I normally bake? Um, cookies? Chocolate chip cookies. And I have a couple things I do 
On Thanksgiving, I do a Paula Deen pumpkin cheesecake. And I have tried, in fact, if I could get my hands on, but I can't, an old video that I attempted to make Ina Garden Barefoot Contessa's coconut cupcakes on a YouTube channel. I used to have a really old YouTube channel that had stuff like that on there. It's gone now, but um, if I could find the footage, I would re-release it. You guys would get a kick out of it. Tally was so teeny tiny and had no front teeth. It was like four years ago. But, um, so yeah, I frosted this for the middle layer. Next, I'm gonna get this cake here on top. You cannot see that because it's not gonna be pretty as a tally. No, tally's gonna help me. And then maybe you can pipe the cupcakes with um, an icing bag and make them real pretty. Yes. All right, we will be right back. All right, you guys, we're back. I cannot believe I got to this point with a cake. It's not pretty, but it'll be a lot better once I frost the entire thing. I got the middle and look what my helper is doing. Cupcakes. She's got the cupcakes and we made a little pastry bag out of a, show them your little bag, Tally, out of just a Ziploc bag. We put, we had a little uh, frosting tip right there. And she's just gonna go ahead and play around with that. And I'm gonna try and frost this cake. Now you guys, I am not a baker, okay? Have I mentioned that like a hundred times? Because that is important information for you to know. So, you guys can laugh at me. I'm fine with that. You know I can laugh at myself. But, um, you know, you wanna make it pretty and edible. By the way, I love this cake plate I have. It actually has a dome cover, but I think that the dome is not quite big enough. If it is, I will insert a picture uh, somewhere in this video if I get it to that pretty point. But for right now, oh no, I'm covering Tally. Let's see, how do we see me and Tally? There she is. Here we are, kind of. Tell you want to move forward a little bit, babes? Okay. I'm going to come over here. I think that works. So um, I will insert a picture if I can get the dome over it. But my point is, I think things in general look so nice when you display them properly, which is why I have this little cute little dessert um, plate and it comes with a lid. And this was purchased at Ikea years ago. We don't have an Ikea in Western New York, but there is one not too, too far, let's say maybe an hour, hour and a half from here in Canada. And because of COVID, obviously we have not been to Canada in so long and we love it there, don't we, Tally? Yes. Canada has so many things. We're maybe an hour and a half to Toronto, which is like the Canadian at New York City. That's what I call it anyway. And it's so beautiful and they have so many cool things. Plays, musicals, they do the film festival there. People go up there just to see the celebrities. There's just so much going on over there and so much that we miss. So we really do miss going there. All right, I'm starting to lose some of the cake on this side. So I'm gonna to have to be extra careful. Now granted, I'm not bringing this anywhere. And if I was, I'll be honest with you guys, I would probably have made it in the nine by 13 pan, which is an option again, and so are the cupcakes. But I probably would have done that just for portability and it seems like it serves more people. And also I'm better at a nine by 13 cake than I am at these layer cakes. But I don't know if you've ever made a layer cake. They are so fun. Once they're all done, you feel like you really did something professional. So I'm just spreading on the frosting. I'm gonna finish this up. Tally's doing a really good job on her cupcakes. And then we'll be right back to show you our final presentation. Okay guys, I'm back. I just finished. Hopefully it looks okay. Again, I'm a home cook. And I'm just topping it with coconut. I think it gives it a whiter appearance so that it's more like a fuzzy bunny. You can, you know, like, let's just say this is a cottontail carrot cake. What do you think, Tally? Cottontail carrot cake? Sure. Sounds okay? All right. So just topping it with coconut. You could see it's not perfect, but, you know, not bad for my first try. 
So there's all the coconuts. Tell you want to present yours and I'll present mine to the camera. Hang on, let me get you guys. You see us? <laughs> all right. All right, guys, Tally and I did our best attempt at finishing up our cupcakes. Tally wanted to go more toward the camera. She's getting giggly. Her sister's behind the camera. Very nice designs. I love them. <laughs> All right. And mom's cake is okay. What do you think? Uh, I'm calling it my cottontail because it's, you know, a pretty good cake to bring to Easter. Coconut carrot cake. So let's cut it open. What do you think? Let's do it. Hold on, I'll be right back with a knife, plate, and forks. We're cutting into it. All right, guys, we're back. I have a knife, I have two plates and two forks, and we are gonna cut into this cake. Yes. Aren't we lucky? All right, I'm gonna make very, we have not eaten dinner yet, by the way. I started this way too late, but we'll survive. There's carrot. there's vegetables in here, right, Tali? Yes. That's right. So. Here we go, the first piece. Oh, it's a nice little baby piece. Perfect, perfect. Let me cut one more. Can you slide the other plate over there for me? Oh, the second piece. My husband is downstairs working out and he will appreciate having the rest of this piece. All right, Sally, ready? Sure. Here it is, let me show it to you. It looks so yummy and moist. And Tally, you go first. All right, thumbs up from Tally. And here comes mom. I can't lie, I already tasted it. But I'll do this just for you guys. Honestly though, the pineapple and the carrot, probably the applesauce too, made it super moist. It's very moist and dense. It's not, like any carrot cake I've ever had. I, I think I need another bite just to really give you guys a good review here. I like it. The coconut helps with the fact that there are no nuts or raisins in here to give it more of a traditional taste. Tally's going, so kids like it too. So if you need to bring something for Easter or if you are having Easter brunch at your house and you need a dessert idea, Try this coconut cake. I keep calling it coconut cake. Carrot cake with coconut. It's really cute for Easter. It looks like a little cottontail. I think kids, adults, everyone will love it. And I will list or link the website where I got the recipe below. And if you have any questions, please ask. Let me know in the comments down below if you did make it and what you think. And do you like this kind of a video, right Kelly? Yes. I thank you so much for spending time with me today and especially in my kitchen. It's a little different than my usual videos. Let me know if you like it. And please hit the subscribe button if you've not already. Hit that bell for notifications and you'll be notified each and every time I upload a video. I hope you all have a great week and I will talk to you soon. Bye everyone. Bye bye.